Great science fiction is about more than escapist fantasies of starships and exotic aliens fighting battles in distant galaxies beyond our solar system. In the proper hand, science fiction can help us reimagine our own reality in subversive ways, provide insightful social commentary about the real world we inhabit every day. Augmented, Volume 1, is a new collection of great science fiction stories that invite us to take a closer look at ourselves and the world around us. Our contributors examine the futility of war, the dangers of xenophobia, the importance of caring for our environment, the risks associated with technology, the rise of artificial intelligence, and they remind us of all the ways we can lose our humanity if we're not careful. These 19 stories are thrilling, mind-bending, frightening, thought-provoking, and sometimes hilarious snapshots of life in at least one of our possible futures. We hope you find something to love about all of them. Augmented, Volume 1, a short story anthology of great science fiction stories available now on Amazon. Hey, heathens, you're listening to the Deadly Faith Podcast, where religion and crime collide. I'm Lola. And I'm Lacey. And this shit is racist. The mind that was in Jesus, that mind is in me. Without me, life has no meaning. Why would God tell you what I'm thinking and tell you what I've said to my wife or my husband when you're not around? It's because I'm the pastor of the church and I need to know. This is the only place where you can see truth. Trigger warning before you listen. Our conversation deals with racism, racist, stupid fuckheads, and... Yes, a lot of racism. 2020 pandemic, riots, things of that nature. So be warned before you step into the show. Yes, there's a lot of that within who we talk about. And then we get into a very good conversation at the end, just talking about racism. And so we would love to have your your input, but we just wanted to give a good trigger warning before you listen any further. If you can't listen, that's okay. We will hear you guys in the next episode. I said that so, so that's a racist. Racist. Specifically, Lacey has uh, tagged this episode as racist fuckstick <laughs> <laughs> instead of the person's actual name. I could not remember me. what his name was and Lola's presenting today, guys. And so I was like, you know what? We're just going to title this recording Racist Fuckstick. <laughs> oh, yeah. And just go with it. I'm kind of sad to be done with our Halloween spoopy serial spoopy. killer series. <laughs> but like, we're also probably going to have more serial killers to come up. Oh my gosh. I still have more to cover on my list. So we will yeah. cover them. But it was nice to have like a, a theme for the month of October. So we want to know if you guys like that. And we did some classics too. You know, Son of Sam, BTK, Dahmer. It was just... Yeah. We did a couple of... I, I, we gave you one surprise. Daniel Corwin. Is it Daniel Corwin? Yeah, Daniel Corwin. Yeah, D- uh, Danny. He was a surprise. A little Danny, Danny boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think a lot of you probably know who he is. So I think that one will be a little bit of a, a surprise. Yeah, but yeah, it, it is weird. And it is like an end of a season because I'm like getting done with my gardening and like preparing <sighs> my, my gardening for winter. She was and it's printing really- tomatoes earlier. <laughs> I was. I cut those off. And I just, I'm so sad. But I have my 2024 garden all planned out. And so I'm really excited about it. It's going to be. Do you have like a diagram so of it? I fucking do. You want to see it? <laughs> I want to see Girl, it. I went balls to the wall with my diagram. Even my husband, when I pulled it out, he kind of laughed because, come on. Um, I showed it to him and I even have like a. <gasps> Oh, that's good. <laughs> I, I told you. She's I much better at this than I am. I do a lot of bucket gardening because I have no land anyway. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We have this, we have the little designated garden area. And so I have it on my iPad where I can like draw a line. And if I hold it, it will like create an actual straight line because I can't draw a straight line if my life depended on it. Lacey's so trying to say that she's it. one of the elites with a fancy iPad. I said, I said, I said, what's wrong with I said, <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, I put it on a credit card and then got charged a bunch of interest. And so uh, don't do that. And okay? then she cried. So, and then I cried. So like, I'm not super fancy. I just make very poor financial decisions. <laughs> hey, I have, okay. Don't let me forget, but for our palate cleanser, I have something that's book related. <gasps> book adjacent. Adjacent. It's a oh, book adjacent exciting. one. So look forward to that at the end, listener. <laughs> it's such a small thing, but it's it's good. <laughs> and then at the end, you're like, really? 
I know. Yeah. I think it's worth the hype. I don't know. It's okay. worth it. We're work for Are we ready for story time? I think I'm going to get really mad today. Okay. Just like preemptively, you've decided. <laughs> no, I mean, just okay. like, I don't know anything about this guy. And so I feel like this episode is going to make me very mad. I'm just going to uh, oh. join the club. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, that's right. It's just. I really am just more annoyed by it because I knew people like this in high school and college. What? So not like this extreme necessarily, but like I don't know. I just ugh. Yeah. it's just it gives the big ick kind of thing. But I we live in the South. Or we grew up in the South. Yes. Like but like you grew up where you're at. I grew up in Texas. I live in Tennessee right now. So like racist comments were so normalized to me as a child that it took until I was in my 30s to be like, holy shit. Like, there are a lot of family members of mine that are fucking racist. And, and it's still like are weird day. passive racism too that like, yeah. that's been the hardest for me to undo for some reason. Uh, I'm still, mm-hmm. I'm still working on it. I'm still unlearning things, you know, but like, because they just seem so normal to me, unfortunately. Um, that's, no excuse, though. Yeah. I should always try to do better. But like the passive racism is just too much. It is. It too is. much. Because like in Christian circles, a lot of the times I've noticed just in the ones that I've run in, that's where racism gets to breed because it's passive and it's like, it seems. It feels very like under the, under the cover. It's yes. very under the cover and you don't realize it's racist until like, especially looking back at the churches, I didn't realize things were racist or that people of color were a huge minority group within church, you know, groups and congregations until deconstructing and looking back at it and being like, Jesus fucking Christ, there's not one person of color on staff. There's not one person of color on the worship team. And so it's like, come on. And I didn't see that until after I deconstructed, but also I'm white. So like, it's not directly affecting me. That's the thing. We, so I didn't pay attention to it, which is not okay. All right, let's talk about let's talk about Matt Matthew F Hale. Oh, if you Google right. Matt Hale, you'll get a lot of results. It's Matt F Hale. Yeah, so don't get him confused and don't start like leaving comments on random people. Yeah, maybe <laughs> not. Media. Probably him racist. Let's not do that. Okay. So he was born July twenty seventh of seventy one. Good old Leo. I fucking hate Leos. Anyway. um, I'm a Leo. I hate them in general. I just cannot deal with them. I say that, but you you are one of my best friends. And my friend Megan is also (laughs) very much a Leo. And you guys are my two favorite people. So Okay, but is it maybe male Leos? It's no... I think that's it. It's male Leos, to be okay. honest. I haven't run cool. into a female Leo that I didn't like, actually, now that I'm taking inventory. My brother, sister, and I both are all, both, all three are Leos. <laughs> my sister was born August 1st. I was born August 3rd. My brother was born August 4th. Nine months prior is my parents' anniversary. Not even fucking kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, we see. They, we see. We see what was happening. So we're all Leos and I love my brother, but he would completely agree with this is he's a lot to, he's a lot to handle, you know, he's no, not boss. Leos he's are just, just very needy in my head. Like needy. I don't think we're need. Uh, and know, the one that needy. I dated. Oh my God. <sighs> yeah. Forget about it. That's anyway. Funny. Okay. He's so, a Leo. We can hate him. Good old Leo. <laughs> <laughs> he was raised in Illinois. His parents got divorced when he was nine years old. I do not have a lot of information on either of his parents. Okay. I wish I had more. I wish I could have interviewed them or something to be like, what is wrong with all of you? But yeah, his mom didn't have a lot of influence over him from what I gathered. Okay. His dad was a police officer and he was pretty much raised by his dad alone, most sources say. So I don't really know um, if mom was in the picture too much. Well, I'm just going to say red flag right away. Just I mean... Right, right away. Noted. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can believe this. Now, at 11 years old, I was not having any type of spiritual awakening 
at that age. No. I was crushing on boys. <laughs> I was just going to say, I was <laughs> listing out all of the men that I wanted to marry. Um, yeah. I was daydreaming about Ben Diesel and signing Paul Walker's poster and telling everybody that he actually signed it and lied to everyone. You know, so like that was my you focus. You did not. Life. Oh, I fucking did. Oh my I God. <laughs> It's like I met him at a gas station. <laughs> oh, at a gas station. How fitting. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I fucking lied. <laughs> yeah, you did. Okay. Well, anyway, Matthew, uh, when he was 11, had a spiritual awakening, but in the form of racial awakening. No, at which 11. I, I have never heard of a racial awakening in my I'm life sorry. until this. Your white Jesus said what to you? <laughs> I'm just saying. So <laughs> when he was around 11, 12, he also, he created this like little conspiracy neo-Nazi group as a child. Okay, I'm sorry. We can go out on a limb here and be like, his father was a fucking racist. Because I'm sorry, no fucking 11, 12-year-old is like, oh, let's create a neo-Nazi group and be fucking racist. I, you, it's learned from the parents. You won't convince me otherwise. No, yeah. I mean... <laughs> oh, I to- oh, wow. Wow. That's- I, I don't know... <sighs> I, I'm not sure like how he reached these other than probably, I don't want to blame his dad because I really don't know, to be honest. Yeah, I, I but, will blame his, I will hold up my personal opinion. No, yeah. I mean, his dad didn't only, discourage. Allegedly. <laughs> no, yeah. His, his, I don't think that his dad discouraged any of it. But So when he was like around 12, he started reading books about Nazi things. Like, Mein Kampf. Okay. <laughs> I mean... Red flag. <laughs> I mean, all the red flags. Let's just... Pfft, all of them. And it wasn't just that. It was many other, like, Nazi prints. He became really interested in the Nazi movement and the teachings of wow. Hitler and other figures like that that were definitely... Like Bailey Sarian says, pick better. <laughs> <Do> better <idols. laughs> it's so true. Uh, it's so true. Yeah. So, okay. He said this as a child and he believed this as an adult. White people huh, <laughs> have oh, been God. responsible for the vast majority of progress in the world. It's so inaccurate. No, white people stole ideas and gave credit to themselves. We appropriated fucking almost, I would say, almost everything. Like, come on. For sure. For sure. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so by eighth grade, which is like, I think, age 14, (laughs) he created another little precocious neo-Nazi group but this time he had a name for it. Oh, cool. Tiny hate group uh, named the New Reich. Oh, okay. Which means the New Empire. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Sh- shooting, shooting straight there, buddy. Okay. He's 14. I- Get a job. Break a fucking line. <laughs> I can't. I can't. So this kind of like persisted in high school. His dad did not stop him from doing any of this. This is what I'm saying. His dad was also a police officer, which like is just... <sighs> but this is in the 70s, right? Okay, so Han, he was born this in the 70s. This is the 70s, yeah. He was born in the 70s. So by 14, he was, he was in the 80s and stuff. So like it's well, it's well far past desegregation and all of that stuff. Like his father, I'm sorry. He was a fucking racist. And that is my opinion, and I will, but I will stand on that. Like, you cannot tell me he wasn't a racist when he idly sat by watching his son making fucking hate groups and being like a simp for the, 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 the mustache man with Hitler and not <laughs> so much. I, I forgot. Okay, you guys didn't so see out. what she just did with her fingers. <laughs> she put both of them, both of her index fingers pointing towards each other above her upper lip. And said, mustache man. 
<laughs> and I wiggled. <laughs> and she wiggled. <laughs> the wiggle mustache. Uh, I was so worked up. I couldn't think of his name. Okay. I'm so mad. That's fine. You don't have to remember it. That's fine. We're 16 minutes in and I'm already like, Argh. okay, we've, sorry. We've had sorry. quite a night. God has hunted us yes. on this very yes. evening for sport. So yes. I, I digress. He laughed at us afterwards. But okay, you know. so after high school, Matthew attended Bradley University to study political science. Big shocker. Wonderful. That's going to work out great. For In 1990, he tried to create two different white supremacy groups. So this is while he's in college. One was called White Student Union, and the other one was called American White Supremacist Party. Okay. You know. Both did not <laughs> attract a great following, and they both failed. <laughs> Right. Okay. I yeah. love that for them. It's love that's it. a win for us there for sure. Good. But that didn't deter him. Uh, unfortunately, of course it he's got some. He's got some gall to him. Yeah. So, his hate. His hate runs deep. Yeah. So in '92, Hale began claiming himself to be the national leader of a group called National Socialist White Americans Party. But he didn't even have like a local following. He was literally like writing a job description for himself. And like, you know, when it's like dress for the job you want, <laughs> he was like what? manifesting the job he wanted as a national leader. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. The galls, <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, right. he was like, he was very ballsy with these yeah. radical views and then like saying, oh, I'm in charge. Don't worry, I'm in charge. Kind okay. of thing. Spearheading the a whole... A little narcissistic much here. Just, oh my God. I literally... There's only one video I could find of him. Uh, well, okay, I lied. There's like two or three uh -huh. that are... They're just not all lengthy, like this one that's on YouTube. And we'll mm -hmm. link it in the show notes. I'll send it over. But, okay. oh my God. He just oozes douchebaggery. Like, <sighs> they all do. I'm sorry. They... I'm not even sorry. I take that back. I'm not fucking sorry. No, don't be they sorry. Are all douchebaggery. All of them. Yeah. It, <laughs> I don't they mind are. us crucifying someone of this nature because he was never sorry about it. Um, if we get canceled <laughs> for reaming fucking white supremacist racists, then like I will, I will die on that hill. Sure. Okay. Cancel me for it. That's fine. I could lay down on yeah. that hill and, and I just... I will lay down. That's yeah, fine. I'll take it. Yeah, so really writing his job description. In 1995, Hale's group was attracting more members. Yay. He had joined forces with an established neo-Nazi group called Church of the Creator. Mm. Let's take a, a small oh detour God. for a Here moment. We come. Let's bring Jesus into it. About Church of the Creator. So th they had a former leader to this whole thing. Um, his name was Ben Klassen. I think it's Klassen or Clausen, who cares, whatever. But he committed suicide in 92, so three years prior. Shit. So the group had been pretty inactive after his death, and they were wanting a new leader. Let me switch over to my other notes because I have other notes on Ben Klassen. Okay. So wow. I, know we're, I know we're still talking about Matthew Hale. Okay, yes. But we we got to we got to talk about this. So World We got to deep for a minute. Sounds good. Yeah. Wor World Church of the Creator. Alternate name is Creativity Movement, which is not at all what it sounds like. <laughs> the, those do not go together. I like, know. Say all. more. <clears throat> so, uh the year that it became like established and active was 1973. The okay. estimated like less than 500 members. And then it was just only operated in the U.S. So the creativity movement was founded by Ben Klassen. Okay. Church of the Creator, creativity movement, whatever. So confusing. So Klassen described the group's like ideas as a replacement for, hold on, <laughs> Judeo-democratic oh, no. Demo, Judeo Marxist values based upon the foundation of race. I'm sorry. What? I, yeah. That's... Okay, somebody explain this to me. And I'm I don't to really me. know what exactly this means either. Like... Uh, okay, so say it again. Judeo... Judeo-democratic Marxist. Marxist. 
Okay, so he's saying it's anti-Semitic. Yeah. Yeah, racist and very right leaning. It's right right wing extreme. So like all three of those. Yeah. Because it's like anti democratic. Yeah. So you're meaning you're Republican, you swing way, way, way to the right. Swing low, Ju- sweet chair. No. <laughs> what is it? Say that again, the beginning. Um Judeo. Yeah. Judeo Democratic Marxist. Like anti? Is it saying anti all of that? No, it's 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 saying the their ideology. It is that. Hold on. Let me let Hold me on. reread my notes. Read okay. it again. Because I'm like, I'm so confused. Classen says that the group's ideology is a replacement. Oh, it's a replacement. Okay. For a replacement. Judeo okay, so yes, I was right. Democratic Marxist values based upon the foundation of race. All right. So anti Semitic, very right wing Republican, anti democratic. That's it. And yeah. anti and, and very racist. So all right. That sounds like sunshine and rainbows. I'm just kidding. No, it doesn't. It's not. It sounds like hell. There's a list of 16 commandments of creativity. Mm-hmm. Each deal with like loyalty, pro-life, but just for the white race. That's it. Like there's nothing super extravagant about these commandments. Um, mm-hmm. They deny the existence of the Holocaust. They reject any type of interracial marriage or like relationship. And they promote the advancement of all white individuals and white institutions in every part of life. So would they support my white Satanist church group? Probably. (laughs) I mean, I just... (laughs) They probably would. They're like, all right. You're not Jewish, so like, and you're not black, so all right, I'll support it. I just can't. I can't. I. Well, this is the bad place. It's the very bad <laughs> place. Uh, so, Classen, let's talk about him for a second. He describes his like religious and ethical background from his parents' conservative beliefs. All right, and like, and his own like white supremacy kind of thing. Um, oh, he, <laughs> it's so weird talking about this. Like it's, like it's real. I know it's real, but God. It is. Yeah, I know. He pretty much is pushing for the eventual destruction of all. People of color. All people of color. And he Jewish people. That any practice that's like harmful to white people or like white agendas is evil Um, We need to attract a lot of people, several hundred creators. Okay. Which are church members to help this movement. Okay. He Mm. said, we need a wider, brighter world. Oh my God. No, he didn't. That's disgusting. Also, while the group was under his lead or whatever, Mm -hmm. the creators which are just other leaders in the group, George and Barbara Loeb were charged with murdering an African-American military veteran in Neptune Beach, Florida. They say it was self-defense, but... Bullshit! George was sentenced to life in prison. Uh, No, I call fucking bullshit on that. About a year after he was sentenced to prison, the victim's family successfully sued the creativity movement and was awarded a million dollars. So that was a win. But at what cost? You know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not super great. So, oh my God. That's uh, technically, I think that was the only, well, that wasn't the only murder, but <laughs> that wasn't the only murder. <laughs> the only one. Like, they had a few more. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the group, like, it continued. So that was in 91. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they firebombed a NAACP <gasps> office. Oh my God. Yeah. That, that, like, it, yeah. Did anyone die? I, I'm not sure. Okay. That I assume shocking. people were hurt, if anything. Yeah. But like, it didn't take down class and it didn't take down the group. So part of me is like, could they not pin it on you guys or did nobody, was no one yeah. there? I don't know. Um, yeah. Didn't get much more info on that. If anyone else gets it, 
Let me know. Let us know. Yeah. Klassen took his own life, though, in 92, overdosing on sleeping pills. Okay. Calling his action an honorable choice, given that life no longer had any meaning for him. Well, you were very racist um, and hateful, so I'm sorry. I'm sure your life didn't have much meaning because when you have that much hate in your heart, I don't see how you could have a joyous life. I meant to say right before that, too, the reason that he had no reason to live or whatever, which wasn't true. He definitely did have reasons to live. He shouldn't have done that. I feel bad he felt that way. Yeah, yeah. However, it was because he he had sold the the group, the church headquarters to a new leader. Okay. A new leader, Richard McCarty. I'm not sure what happened with this dude because okay. I don't think he took the leadership role. I don't think okay. that that like happened because they were missing a leader for like three years until Matthew Hale stepped up. Right. So right. that part's a little bit fuzzy, but with him like selling it, you know, and like appointing a new person, he just felt like his work was over. And that he had no purpose, uh, which is sad. Okay. And I hope that no one ever feels that way. However, yeah, fuck you for all that you allowed to happen and all that you participated mm-hmm. in. Yeah, and what I meant by like, not I'm not saying that he should have killed himself or that he, you know, that that was like that was an okay thing to do. All I meant was that I can see how somebody with that much hate in their heart and in their life can get to the point where they just like. I mean, really what it comes down to is hate for yourself because there's something in yourself that you cannot reconcile that you have to like externally, you know, focus on and uh, hurt other people with. So really there's some kind of like deep self-loathing happening in that person probably. And that sucks. I can see that. That sucks. Okay, so let's fast forward back over to, now we're done with Klassen. Um, yes. Just had to give a little brief overview of how this place was established and what it have you. It was a shit show before Matthew Hale. <sighs> I mean, <laughs> and it's over. all the things that Matthew Hale was trying to like be a part of and yeah. promote. So, yeah. anywho. And, and this was like somewhat established and he could just kind of... And they were missing right a leader. It. it was just like he yeah. was in the right place at the right time to fill that position. So, in 1996, he was elected as the highest leader. Okay. So I believe in 92 is when he like joined in and like brought okay. his his followers. And then he like worked his way up kind of. Gotcha. However you do that. I don't want to know. I don't either, you know. So yeah. And he was given a 10 year term. Apparently I... Okay. This had this whole government to it. I was just about to say like this looks, this sounds very <laughs> like government... Because you have like creators, but then you have like people that are below creators. Mm-hmm. The like oh. recruits that aren't quite like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's like baby Christians. Uh-huh. Not to say that these people were Christians, not to say like that Christianity promotes anything like this at all. It's just like, if you think about it, this is my easiest way to like relate it is thinking about a Christian mm-hmm. that has converted someone, bringing them into the fold, and then they're like baptized and considered like a baby Christian. They don't know a lot about Mm -hmm. what their path should look like and whatever. To me, it sounds very much like a mashup between the military and the government. You know, like you work the ranks up within the military and then like you have the terms within the government. For sure. You know, yeah. They were taken from a lot of different places, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, just white people being white and appropriating everything. (laughs) I said what I said. Anyway. She said what I said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, delusional. Um, right. So before entering this like new 10-year highest position, whatever, mm-hmm. he had made up his own groups and titles. Okay. So he was walking into new territory with an established mm-hmm. group with its own like code of conduct, principles, philosophies. But he was bringing in a new order. All right. Much as okay. the new leader. He was giving it a facelift. Uh, I guess so, sure. <laughs> so, still the basic principle, though, of this group is a bunch of whites. Whites have propelled civilization as we know it. Credit mm. whites with creating all important technology and education advances. Who's you, Whatever. Uh, he just, like, 
I made like minor tweaks. It really wasn't anything that's like worth noting. Okay. It's it's all the same shit. He just like made up a bunch of new like titles and positions and like some weird, like I said before, like a weird hierarchy that I don't really understand like how you get in each of these positions, what you yeah. do. It only makes sense to the group. Probably. Nobody else from the and I couldn't find a person. chart on it. I really wish someone would yeah. have made a chart for the organization. There's for my no research. <laughs> there's no pyramid of showing you the different levels. <laughs> it's a pyramid scheme. The whole this is where I the mean, MLM started. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm sorry. I mean that was a hot uh, take. <laughs> <laughs> that was more than no. a hot take. That was like a fiery take. Anyway. It was a it was. <sighs> Some MLMs are fine, whatever. But yeah. I will disagree with that. I've uh, been part of one. You've been part of one. We know. Oh, I've been part of so many. I I was delusional. That's fine. My I mother used myself. to sell jewelry and it made her happy. Hey. So that's nice. But Go. you do you, boo. <laughs> okay. So the church, they had a small but serious following. <sighs> they were dedicated and oh, they were uh-huh. responsible for hate crimes. Of course they were. So not not technically Matthew Hale, but the group. Ugh. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's like saying that Tiffany was not technically responsible for Lucas Leonard's death. Yep, correct. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it so fucking was. We all know the truth. So yeah. one of the crimes was there was a black sailor that was murdered at the hands of one of the church's ministers. But it was covered up by Classen. So this is when Classen was alive. Well, yeah, you're right. They had, they had a few more murders under the belt. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Hale is now in power. He's decided to change the name to the World Church of the Creator. Which is okay. not... The, the names are so misleading for like every single name they have for this group. So yeah. misleading. It has nothing to do... It sounds like you're saying... World Church of God. Yeah. At, when you're saying like the creator. But right. it's not that at all. It's not. They're the creator, they're equating as a white, the the white race. So oh. pretty much if you put it in like simpler terms, it would be world church of the whites. The white people. The white. <laughs> the whitest. The world's church of the whiteness. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. there's this one TV interview that I, I referenced earlier where he's like an absolute douchebag. Yes. Just uh, <laughs> full blown douche canoe. There's so much like gaslighting and manipulation and like weird. Oh God. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's gross. It's just gross. Yeah. He was, so he was interested in getting media attention. He really liked. He loved it. He loved media yeah. attention. He wanted of to like he did. spread the gospel or the message, you know, of the white people <laughs> that there's a racial holy war. There's a racial war kind of thing happening. Uh, one of the first things he says in the interview, oh, it's so gross. He says, "We have a right to hate." <laughs> oh my god! Which is like, I am. It's not wrong, but it's not right. You know. You know what? Your body is your body and every shape and size is beautiful. But that gives little dick energy that oh, is does. broken and has warts on it. I agree. I and agree. I can say that because he's a racist. Yeah. Don't cancel uh, I think so. That's fine. <laughs> By all means, we can't, we can't prove any of that, but we can That's sure right. as hell make a good joke on you it. You know, it, it, well, okay, let's put it this way. It's little dick energy and he has no idea how to use it and he has no idea where the G-spot is or what the fuck a clitoris is. Probably not. I never read anything about a spouse. Oh. Um, or children. Now that I think about it. Hmm. Oh my God. That's interesting. No, it doesn't say he's ever married. Mm. That's what I thought. Ew. Is it? I just so he's like the grossest kind of white. I just googled him. He, I okay. Have you ever watched Dexter? The TV no, show? but I'm aware of it. Okay, so for those that know, in the first season of Dexter is um, a, a character named Rudy, and 
he looks, he's giving Rudy vibes. Like, I was going to say, spoiler alert, alert, spoiler alert, Rudy is a psychotic serial killer um, right. in the show. Love so that. he's giving a very much, ew, that's all I'm going to say. It's just fucking ew. Okay, sorry, keep going. No, you're good, you're good. Yeah, so him saying on that TV interview, we have a right to hate was just like, I mean, that's immediately how the interview started too. <laughs> that That's wonderful. Really, you are, ugh. A part of me thinks he like did it just to like, you know, when Miley Cyrus does things with her butt and then it gets her a lot of views. And she said before, I do it to get the fame. Like you might hate me, you might love me, but either way I get money, you know? Yeah. It's the same thing, I think. Yeah. Part of me thinks. Because he was just trying to spread the message. So I I literally cannot say this word in good conscience. I, I won't say any of the things that he has said. Yeah, that's okay. As far as like, name calling a, a person of color but he said the n word is not taboo okay. and that whites and blacks use it all the time <sighs> which okay so i i did a little bit of research because i honestly had no idea like what the word stemmed from or like right i, I mean i've just always heard that's a bad word if there's an a at the end of it it's not offensive I have heard that. <laughs> but like I'm a white person. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to use it yeah, either no. way. It's just not... It feels even weird if like it's in a song lyric. I'm like, I'll just be like, and just skip over it. No, yeah. I mean, so it was... Uh, the origin is Latin from 16th century. The I don't even want to say... I don't want to say... You can just look it up, guys. Um, but the meaning just means like the color black, like literally uh-huh. the color black. That's it. Oh my. Okay. So there was, I saw this the other day, somebody had like a Karen came out, like yeah. roasting Crayola because what? It, what? their black marker, it said black. Yeah. And then it said underneath it, uh, Negro. Yeah. Negro. Is it the negro Spanish negro? Term yeah, for like it? how you, yeah. For, and she was like, oh, I thought we've moved past this in all society. It's like, I mean, <laughs> roasting Crayola and Crayola responds and is like, ma'am, that is the Spanish word for the color black. I mean, <laughs> you're carrying for the right reasons. However, <laughs> right. <laughs> however, a simple Google search could have alleviated I mean, that. We're all supposed to take high school Spanish. I'm sorry. Like, you know, one through 10 and at least your colors. Come on. Okay, so real quick, I, I want to give a, a small, like, uh, I don't know, preface of whatever, this yeah. word. Yes. This is from muse.edu. Mm-hmm. I, I'll link it. Okay. But uh, recent scholars presume that the word, <laughs> has always been a racist epithet thrust upon African Americans to demean Black social identity in the United States. So it has always yeah, been a negative term, even if the root of it was not necessarily like that of hate or like yes. meanness. It's just inherently people have taken this and made it something horrible. Because right. they're mean to people of color for literally no reason. They're just existing. Right. I feel like it's, okay, not to the same extent. So please hear me on that. Not to the same extent. No, yeah. But I feel like it is very much the, like, being called a slut and then you mm-hmm. kind of embodying, like, oh. and taking the word slut back and being like, you know, like, I will embrace you calling me that. And it's kind of how I would think the Black community took the word back and uses it within their music and in their culture. And they can use it. And they are not saying it as a racist slur. No, no, no. We can't. It would be like a man calling us a slut and be like, you just called yourself a slut. But like, oh, there's a line. And this I feel seems like, that's like a really good thing. analogy and I wish we had a person of color. Where is Kyle when I need him? I wish we had him yeah, present to like weigh in on this. I should have asked him beforehand. I'm sorry. Yeah, Whatever. No, I would say though, like not to the same extent at all. No, it's whatsoever. not to the same extent, but it's just, but, I think maybe something that like can make it make more sense in the person's yeah. mind that is not a person of color because 
we suck and we don't understand we do. all the struggle that comes with it or like... It, yeah, it's not our lived experience. We're not fully informed of all the like terminology, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know anything. Yeah. I don't know anything at all. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. At the end of the day, I don't know anything at all. So... I got nothing in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> Too swift, that's so true. <laughs> okay, so he is saying about this word though, that whites and blacks use it and it shouldn't be taboo. Okay, we've just gone into our whole discussion about that. So no, don't say it. No. Leave it be. Unless you're black, do whatever you want. I don't care. I love you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Anyway, I love you. he also says, <laughs> he also says that there is no God. That's right. Screech! Pump the brakes. What? Hold on. Rewind. You mean that they are a church, but he is actually saying that there's no God. Pretty much they're subbing. It's like clickbait. This whole episode is clickbait, of actually. Course. Because I'm not even joking. It's an organization, not a church. Do you see how the name is misleading? Yeah. Oh, they yeah. do that on purpose. But their ideas are rooted in conservative, like, uh, politics and religion. Because yeah. they, several of this group, not all of them, will mm-hmm. use scripture, like, out of the Christian Bible, to back mm-hmm. up racist beliefs. But, okay, but you're saying there's no God. So I'm sorry, you can't use the Bible if you're denying God. That just, I'm sorry. He's no. saying, as, He's saying their whole group, as a whole, they do not have, like, they don't believe in a God as a whole. Now, as I said, there is, like, a subset that would Mm -hmm. use the Bible. Yeah. For their beliefs. But he says, there is no God. God is the white race. Oh, he did not. He did. He went there. I'm sorry. He says it outright. I'm literally (laughs) using direct quotes from this interview. If God was the white race, we wouldn't be so fucking stupid. So the whites are the creator. Oh my gosh. Whites are God. Uh. (laughs) He says, this isn't a hate group. That's, you're misnaming us. We're not a hate group. We love white people. He said that outright. He said, (laughs) we we love white people. You fucking son of a bitch. Do you see, it's so manipulative, like the way that he like will turn things Uh and like make it seem like a good thing. I don't know. Yeah. It's dumb as hell. So 1998, Hale was rejected by Illinois Bar Committee. Okay. So he was like trying to be a lawyer and all that shit. And they were like, "Eh, no. You're problematic. And I mean, you have all the red flags. We're going to just say... um, no. Literally, it wasn't because he couldn't it's... pass the bar exam. They wouldn't let him take the bar exam because they told him, and they literally had to like put this in writing and tell him, <laughs> you have no requisite moral character or any fitness to practice law in Illinois. Agreed a million percent. See? So like, if they're saying that, that you... You literally have to be neutral if you're going to go into law. Like, that's just yeah. Not, you are sticking to the facts, sticking to the law. You can't have all these other biases in your brain hole. Fucking so, noggin. He's a smooth brain boy. He's got no wiggles. No. None no. at all. Not, so they rejected not him. Not a one. Thank God. We're taking another detour at this okay. point. We're taking another detour. <sighs> On July 2nd of 1999, a college-aged person of the church, the organization, drove through Illinois Mm -hmm. and Indiana, Mm -hmm. committing a series of drive-by shootings targeting only Orthodox Jew, Black American, (gasps) and Korean victims. He killed a Black American basketball coach and a Korean college student. So only two people died, but I think others were hurt. I don't have a head count on that. The killing spree ended on Independence Day when the student, his name was Ben Smith, he committed suicide. I have no words. I don't either. I, you, no. You can't tell me that you're not a hate group 
when your members are doing this. And you're not discouraging it. No. And you're not giving any like punishment? Question Mm -hmm. mark. Because all the other crimes they were celebrated for, you know? That's ridiculous. They tried to cover things up for them. They they tried to make it as though uh, they had never done anything wrong except just love white people. <sighs> so, uh, um, just... after all this came out that he was one of those followers, Hale went on to a televised interview and said, you know, we don't condone violence. We don't, like, illegal activities. We don't do that. Mm-mm. No, thank you. No, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the surviving victims sued Hale and the organization. Thank God. Good job. And uh, in a turn of events, <laughs> oh no, Ben Smith actually testified at Matthew Hale's appeal for law practice licensing. Wait, before he went on this spree, mm-hmm. he testified. Yeah, for Matthew Hale to try to get him to like his character. Let's let's review. In 1998, he was rejected. In 1999, shooting spree. Oh my gosh! It smells fishy in here. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So that's how that kind of comes a little full circle ish. Mm-hmm. But there's that yeah. connection. So Ben Smith, you know, he committed suicide, which is unfortunate, but he will never stand trial or be held accountable for his actions in that way. No. So in this life, that is. Which ah. that's like the part that makes me so mad just when I know these it, people do this and then commit suicide. It's like there's no closure really <sighs> on it, you know? Mm-hmm. Except that person's death. That's just that's all you got. Yeah. It kind of feels like everything feels like everything was in vain. Yeah. But it wasn't, you know, and, you know, we honor and and remember, you know, the the two victims that were killed and they do not deserve that. And fuck you, Ben Smith. (laughs) I can say that because you're dead. God, this is, I wish I believed in hell. I, every episode, (laughs) Lacey is recruiting. It's been a fucking hard time. Recruiting her, um, her old ideologies. No. Like, don't you want it? Don't you want it? (sighs) No, okay, I can't. so side note, <laughs> side note. Oh, no, um, where's this going? After all this, after all this happened, Hale claimed that integration kills whites. And Excuse he me. said, my church has not committed any crime. Uh, we committed five crimes in 30 years. He literally said, we have not committed any crimes. My church has committed five crimes in 30 years. Well, I'm glad that you kept count, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know a lot of groups that have committed no crimes in 30 years, buddy. <laughs> I don't think that's a bragging point. That's what I was like. Well, firstly, you just contradicted yourself. But then secondly, Absolutely. like, that's not a flex. Like, that's uh, not. No, not at all. How about we don't? committed any crime? Okay, we've committed thirty crime, three or uh, five crimes in thirty years. Yeah, and hey. he he wouldn't like claim Ben Smith to be part of the organization, but it came out that he was recruited by Matt Hale. Yeah, you know? <laughs> so it's like because eh, okay. like nice Matt, deflection. Uh, Matt Hale went around to like different. You know, he was really in the media and he was really trying to get the message out. He would go to mm-hmm. different campuses and like, you don't see uh, an officer recruiting you for like the army. You see him and he's like, let me tell you about that church like right here and all that stuff. So it was like street evangelism for white no, supremacy. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's what he disgusting. did. Okay. We're taking another turn. All right. Er- it's not that far off though. I like my so, sound effects this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Joan left left cow? Left cow. I want to say left cow. Okay, let's go with left cow because that sounds way more interesting. Left cow. Joan left cow is a judge. Was a judge. Um, judge left cow. Oh no. She <laughs> she was sued by Hale. Oh god. 
because he declared a state of war on her and accused her. What? (laughs) Just wait for it. I have more details. Oh, no. Okay. Accusing her of bias in a news conference, saying that her uh, ruling, her ruling over, so like she was presiding over cases that were against his church. Okay. And against people in his church. Mm hmm. So she happens to be married to a person that is Jewish. Oh, no. Or she happened to be married. Oh, shit. I have to say past tense. Um, Ugh, I don't like where this is going. And her grandchildren, just side note, were biracial. And he like had a lot to say about that too. Of like, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with Matthew Hale, but a lot. He was saying, I'm declaring war on you because you have bias against us just because of these two things, these two facts about your life that you're married to a Jewish person and your grandchildren are biracial. So in 2000, the spring of 2000, they were getting kind of worried. When I, I mean, they, law enforcement was getting worried oh, about Matthew Hale doing something to the judge and like they were getting worried about all the <laughs> he all said the war war do you know what happens at war people and like, die if you listen to him in interviews and how serious and how actually convicted he is in his beliefs if he said war you would probably be worried too so, I don't want to give him more power than he deserves. But if you look at pictures of him, he looks like a very angry little man. And so like, <laughs> he's up there. He actually was kind of tall. Yeah, I know. But I like to call him little. But like, yeah, he's just, just in little. general, his spirit gives a small, angry mushroom, but like the kind that's poisonous. No, he's, he's yes, he's tall, but he's small in my head. Okay. and But he's just so angry. If he was like, declaring war on one of my loved ones and knowing the people that he has within his organization, I'd be fucking terrified. Yeah, that could do his bidding for him. And like, he had a lot of like local politicians and that kind of thing that were like dabbling in the group, you know? Of course they were. I I mean, he's a political figurehead and he's Mm -hmm. got his hands in a lot of different, not pockets, whatever, whatever it's called. Yeah. He's got his... He's got his hands in a lot of pots. No? No. <laughs> what is that? We don't know the phrase. Just move what? on. Never mind. He's, he's, isn't it pots? No, it's not. Baskets. He's got his hands in a lot of baskets. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're going to take another detour and just move the fuck on. Okay. Never okay. mind. In the spring of 2000. He's got a lot of influence. Got it. A, a guy named Tony Evola. Okay. He's an FBI informant. He was sent to infiltrate the organization. Hell yeah, he was. Because specifically, uh, so we're just, we're, I'm kind of, what's that thing called? Where you go like. <laughs> Rabbit trail. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm bouncing from one, one place to the other, but it all makes sense in my head somehow. Uh, I hope y'all can follow this, this train. He was sent to infiltrate because of Hale's speech at Ben Smith's funeral. Oh, no. What did he say? What did this fucker say? He, so he was speaking very highly of Ben Smith at his funeral, which you would do at a funeral. That makes sense. And said that he regretted Ben's actions, but also said he preferred nonviolent resistance because he was being watched all the time. Oh, not because like I'm against hurting people, but because I'm being watched. So (laughs) I'm against it. Yeah. And he also boasted about his organization's freedom to to use whatever actions they had to, to resist tyranny. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. You just sounded the fucking alarm. So this is when the FBI, you know, gets involved. You're a problem, right? Evola impressed Matthew Hale with a confrontation with a, a protester of their organization. So he like pretty much went up to a protester and was like, hey, fuck off, man. Yeah. Whites, what's up? <laughs> I don't <laughs> Something like that. I wish you guys could have seen Lola because she's like, 
she like did a gun and was like, what? Like white people. I'm sorry. It was really funny. Anyways. It was, you had to be there for it. (laughs) You had to be there for Um, it. I'm so lame. So uh, Hale was impressed, you know? So he decided to make Evola the head of his security, which this gave him Mm -hmm. access to Hale's, you know, travel plans and made him his personal bodyguard. It was perfect. It put him in a really good position. So in 2003, or like from 2000 to 2003, Evola recorded conversations that he had with Hale and Uh like with different organization members, different meetings, he was he was getting all the tea, if you will. Yeah. So. Yeah. And he would also Love like it. just randomly question Hale on like he's like so so what do you want the outcome here to be like what what's our what's our goal here it's you know end game. <laughs> with the supremacist agenda <laughs> and he would do it through like. He did it through online chat rooms, like when he'd be talking with him or just in person and record it. So he had yeah. written and verbal uh, evidence of it. So, mm-hmm. and then, you know, Matthew Hill, he would be like, we have to do a legal maneuver for the group. Like we have to, you know, we, we got to be careful. But then he would also be like, I don't really care if there's a whistleblower though, for real. Because like, if they okay. testify against us, We'll just like retaliate and whatever. It'll be fine. He just thinks that they're invincible, that n- untouchables really, you know? Right, right. But there's nothing that is he's saying that could they could use as like direct evidence to like put him behind bars at this yeah. point. Yeah. Gotcha. And you know, Avella would try to bait him on a lot of things, mm-hmm. but like on illegal activity. But Hale would eventually like kind of reject it or like discourage it or go a different route. Mm -hmm. I think he was kind of scared of whistleblowers and like in uh, undercover informants, but yeah, regardless, whatever. So he never really got anything of substance on tape up until (sighs) December, (laughs) December 2002. Evola got a recording of Hale having absolutely no issue with Evola taking whatever actions he wanted against Joan Lefkow. Oh, Judge no. Lefkow. The yeah. judge. Okay, but that's good. But you so, said you used a past tense, so like, I still don't like where this is going. This led to Hale's charges of soliciting murder in January 2003. Okay. Please tell me he's behind bars. <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> so... Hale is charged with soliciting murder January 2003. 2004, his trial begins. All right. His trial begins. And the following, literally like a year later, it's April 6, 2004, the trial begins. April 6, 2005, he's sentenced. Damn. So he's sentenced. But right before that, unfortunately, Judge Lefkow's mother and husband were murdered at their Northside home. Left Hale as a suspect, even though he was in custody at the time. Yeah. Um, but he was cleared because the real killer, Bart Ross, he had a medical malpractice lawsuit that was not handled the way that he had wanted by the judge. Right. So he took revenge. And then uh, he shot himself at a traffic stop Wow. shortly after leaving a suicide note admitting to the killings. So, Wow. But still, he had tried to s- solicit um, Evola to do whatever means, you know, to deal with mm-hmm. Judge Lefkow. So, okay. You said that he killed Judge Lefkow. Uh, Jeff, you said Judge Lefkow's mother yes. and, and husband. her husband. So Judge Lefkow, the judge, is mm-hmm. a woman, correct? Yes. He they he killed her. Yeah. And her mother? No. Judge is alive. Okay. Judge is alive. The judge is alive. Judge is yeah, unless she's died as of recently. I'm pretty so sure she, she's Yeah. She, she so he killed Judge Lefkow's husband. Yes. And Bart her Bart Ross killed mother. her mom. And I don't think she was home. Jesus. Can you yeah. imagine losing your mom and your husband? I know. In one fell swoop like that. Jeez. Horrific. 
Honestly, it's just, it's disgusting. Shit. <sighs> I can see him being a suspect if he is, because you said this, these happened before he was actually sentenced. So yeah, yeah. It, depending on the crime, sometimes I have seen where somebody's found guilty, but they actually aren't in jail up until their sentencing. Then they go to jail, depending on the crime. You know what? That, but and that could have been the case. I, I bet that's why they looked at him as a su- suspect too. Yeah. Um, because it happened February 28th of 2005, the murders. Yes. But he wasn't actually sentenced until April 6th, 2005. Yeah. So a couple of months later. So that's like he had to have been out. Yeah. Or he was still going to trial and he was out on bond. Type it thing. seems that it seems that way um, yeah. because of so many years in between, it seems like he was still active. Yeah. And I tell you, there needs to be more information on this case. There needs to uh, be. Yeah. I, there's a lot of gaps in the story. I need to know more about his childhood. Honestly, I need to know. Yeah. I, um, I have questions. And about his college days. I need to know about that group that kind of like, I need to know the about the failed groups. he tried to create. Yeah. I need to know about those, how those came about. I, I need to interview some people. I'll tell you. So, he was sentenced to 40 years in prison under presiding judge James S. Moody Jr. So there were several dozens of tapes that Evola had collected over the years. Um, ugh, he had, it was just racial slur after racial slur, jokes about Ben Smith's killing spree. <gasps> it was horrendous. Son of a bitch. So he was, he was moved to AXD I don't really know what that stands for. Okay. AXD Florence is what it says. Ah. He was moved there, but then he was moved out of there to a medium security prison in Indiana in 2016. So okay. in 2005, the year 2005, he was in AXD Florence, whatever that is. It's probably a town, a pri- the name of a prison in a town in Illinois. Yeah. That's going to be my guess. So he was there. And then in 2016, he was finally moved to medium security prison in Indiana. And then he was returned to Florence in 2017 and then moved again to a medium security. Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's just pop him back and forth. Okay. And he's, I don't understand, but like he was moved again in 2020. And I think that was because of the pandemic. And then all this to say, he's alive. Mm-hmm. He's in prison, okay. and his release date is estimated to be April 2nd, 2036. He will be 64 years old. No. No. I mean... I'm sorry. 64 is still young. They can always reassess, you know. They can mm-hmm. see if they can pin more stuff to the guy. I'm sure yeah. there's plenty of covered up things. I mean, seriously, it was extremely difficult trying to find information on his life. You can find a good bit about the church. Yeah, the church, there's that's not where the bulk much. of this info came from. But like, uh, when yeah. I looked him up, the, you just type in his name, Matthew F. Hill on Google, and then you go to the images. There's like seven. Yeah. It, okay, maybe, maybe, a, maybe like 10, but like, that's it. Like, I feel, I feel like there should be more coverage on this man. I'm pretty sure that Bart Ross was part of, so... He it he mis he mistook he didn't know that her mother and husband were coming to her house. He <gasps> thought she was coming home because he wanted to kill her. That was the whole point was to kill right. her. Right, like, that's what I then, would thought. Yeah, so he said, "I have been waiting for her to return home from work, but it was them that came home." And like later that day, she came home and found their bodies. Unfortunately, no, no, I know. I hate yeah. that she was the one to find them. I'm Horrific. just glad it wasn't the kids. <laughs> And he said that he had no choice but to shoot them. Okay. No. Nope. You had so many choices. So, like, I don't know, maybe just not go to their house? Like, get a different job because apparently you're not a good doctor and just move the fuck on with your life? (sighs) Yeah. You're already going to kill yourself. So, like... What good does it do to murder somebody else if you're already if you're just going to end your own life? It's not going to bring you any. Well, he joy. killed himself at a traffic stop, mm-hmm. but he had a suicide note. He did. He had the suicide note, you know. So apparently, he was going to do it. I I guess this was just like when he was stuck at a traffic stop and he was thinking, oh, they're looking for 
they're looking for me instead of being like, this is just to make sure you have your license and registration. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Because uh, f- from what I understand, it was a routine traffic stop. And then he shot himself. Literally, as the officer was like at the door. Oh, you said traffic stop. And I thought traffic light. That he um, just like, stopped at a fucking traffic light. No. And he, like, <laughs> he said, run light. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. No, I'm sorry. We're not joking about okay, suicide. Okay, We're sorry. not. Yeah, no. But... No, it was like a... Uh, he got traffic, stopped. Routine traffic know. stop. A checkpoint, had, if you will. But he had already planned on doing it because he had the he suicide note. So yeah. why kill them? I'm sorry. That's he says just, that like... Yeah, no. From the quotes that I read, it seemed like they had walked in and he was like, oh my God, they see me and like they're going to report me, you know, being in this house. And it's like panic mode. Shh drifted on, you know? Just, not right. Not no. right at all. How about just don't try to kill people because just nice people don't do that. How about just like be a good grow. noodle and use your <laughs> noggin and don't and don't hurt others. Yeah, I, but honestly, but if you're in, in a major white supremacist group like this, you're not thinking with your full brain. That's correct. Yeah. And so that's you awesome. can't you can't make sense of their life choices and decisions when you are that full of hate. I'm sorry. Love for white people. (laughs) (laughs) It's giving all lives matter. It's It's giving all all lives matter. All lives matter on steroids. Let me just say something too. line of cocaine. Yeah. So during 2020, when, you know, a lot of race riots, I'm using air quotes, were happening. They were happening right in my city, Birmingham, Alabama. Like, I, a lot of businesses were broken into. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of, you know, places were destroyed. Yeah. And you saw camera crews filming a lot of people of color Smashing things, uh huh. But not filming the white people because I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> there was white people smashing stuff. There also were white people, but n- mm-hmm. not only that. When you when you think you have the power to suppress somebody for so long, and you think that like you're the only ones in charge, you think that you get to play God. Uh-huh. You don't understand the kind of uprising that you're literally begging for. Seriously. They were asking for it. And in this case, I can say that. Like, Mm -hmm. literally, the government, the city, the whole United States, I mean, we were already in a really hard time with the pandemic, you know? Mm -hmm. We got to give grace to that. But at the same time, so much was coming up with all this crime against people of color, uh, all these disservices to, you know, the community what did you think was going to happen? That, literally, all I wanted to say is, what did you think was going to happen here? And yeah, you're mad about some broken glass, but they're mad about a sister that's not coming home. Yeah, they're mad about actual dead people. Yeah, and I, they're mad about their kid that they're never going to, they have to bury their child. No parent should ever have to do that. Never. You shouldn't outlive your kids. That's just, uh, I'm on my was, soapbox and I'm white and it doesn't matter what I say. Yeah. But we have to, we have to keep having the conversation because you can post the like Black Lives Matter and you can do the Blackout Tuesday thing on Juneteenth. You can do all that, but it doesn't make a difference if you're not electing people of color mm-hmm. that stand for things that we also believe in. It, you know, and, and supporting black businesses. And, and what are you saying to Uncle Billy at Thanksgiving when he makes the racist joke? Yes, what where are you, are you standing you up for them when it comes to passive racism? In mm-hmm. your church, when your pastor says something like, I was talking to this man the other day, a black man. Why did you have to add that, pastor? Yeah. Why did you have to add that? Did you? Does that make a difference to the context here? No. Yeah. Are you talking about his culture? Uh, is that a point of the story? If not, then why? When George Floyd died, I that's when I started to really like wake up to racism in America. And I started decolonizing 
and unlearning and sitting with the realization that I myself am racist because I was taught very racist things growing up. Mm -hmm. And so I would have racist tendencies, but didn't think that they were racist because (laughs) I had black friends, you know? So I had to unlearn a lot of that. And I had to have some really hard conversations um, that were very uncomfortable for me because I was just at the beginning of my deconstruction and I was still the people-pleasing Christian girl. And I wrote a letter that said, Dear Black Lives Matter. And it was literally a letter apologizing for not seeing my inherent white privilege. And it, it was it was a long story. It was very heartfelt and everything. And I had somebody, I won't name any names or anything, but I had somebody literally lose it when they found out that I wrote that. And they came at me and said, how can you apologize for being born white? What? (laughs) I was like, that's uh, not wait, what I was on. saying. Like, that is not what I said. And that is not what the uh, black community or people of color are asking us to sit here with. Nope. They don't want you to feel bad for being born white. They just want you to recognize that because you are born white, the color of your skin is not something that interferes with or holds you back within society. That doesn't mean you don't have hardships, but because of my whiteness, I have a privilege within society. I have less hardships yeah. based on the color of my skin. I may have hardships, but the color of my skin is never is a not factor. One. Is not That's a factor. Never a factor. For and sure. This same person, we had a conversation after this. This is literally all in the same conversation. I was getting worked up. And mind you, I'm with my child oh. at the moment. Oh God. Trying, yeah. And they are doing my makeup. And we're trying to have this like mother-daughter moment. Mm -hmm. This still, this moment in time really pisses me off more when I think back on it. And this person is bringing this up over and over again. And I'm trying to diffuse the situation because at this point, my child was very young, the one that was in the room. And I just didn't want to have this conversation in front of my child. And... They they said, they're killing people. Do you know that these Black Lives Matter people, they're killing people in the streets. And they had their phone out and they were on Facebook. And my <sighs> child says, I want to see. And my child walks over to this person and this person turns their phone around and shows them <gasps> what they think is a dead person in the street. Oh my God. And I had no idea how to handle this situation. And I cannot remember exactly what happened or how I diffused it and how we just like moved on. But I went to bed that night and I woke up at three o'clock in the morning having a panic attack. because oh, my the witching ch- hour. The witching hour. Uh, my child saw a dead body. And I was, I was just so overwhelmed with everything. And I just didn't have all the information to like combat what this person was saying. So I sat down and I did a little Googling. I found out that... Huh, This person was not dead. He was passed out because he was knocked the fuck out because he went to a Black Lives Matter protest Mm -hmm. and he started spouting white supremacist fucking racist bullshit and people started telling him to leave and then they started, he started throwing punches and then somebody like kicked him in the head and knocked him out. Somebody decked him and knocked him out. (laughs) And so I was like, he was the problem. But this one news station or article had like spun it to where this person they spread a rumor that this person had died. And so we were able to go back and like tell my child, like, no, that person was not dead. And we were swimming the next day. And this person that this all happened with asked me, are we okay? And I said, honestly, I'm glad you said that because I'm really unhappy with what happened yesterday. And I was able to confront them and kind of explain a couple things um, they do not think the, ha- the situation happened the way that I saw the situation. They said that they did not turn their phone to my child. Mm-hmm. I, I, I disagree. Like, I, like, yeah, I remember he's specifically don't turning ma- don't, don't to my child. Don't try to my co-host a liar. Pull up. <laughs> let's, let's do it. But I had to sit in that moment. I had to choose, okay, I'm going to have this hard conversation with this person that it, I need to have this conversation with. And it was very uncomfortable. And 
and and I did it and I I could have done better and I could still do better as we move on in society or as I move on in my life. But I will not let racist shit. That's like one of the things that I have told myself. I will let a lot of stuff go when it comes to religion and people's beliefs and political things. But if it's homophobic or racist, I won't let it go. No, I will call no, you no. out on that. I don't care who you are. I have a really difficult time with this with certain people. Mm-hmm. With certain <laughs> certain people certain. that are now chosen blood. Oh, if you okay. Will. Okay. I was about to yeah. say certain uh, relatable. <laughs> so, because mm-hmm. these people still subscribe to the mindset of a 40-year-old white man. Oh, God, <laughs> or, so... I'm sorry, not 40-year-old. 1940s white man. That's I, what I, I, mean, I got what you were saying. I was told. Totally 1940s white man yeah. that can't deal with the fact that just because someone looks different than you doesn't make it a threat to you exactly Mm -hmm. not a threat at all no actually since i've done a lot of the you know decolonizing and undoing of my old racist mindset yeah (laughs) i feel much safer around a person of color than a white person dude seriously i am not even kidding also can we talk about this as people that know about all these true crime cases, how many of them were a person of color, these serial killers? Dude, seriously, how many out of everybody that we've talked about so far from the existence of our show? Like, don't tell me that white people aren't violent. Episodes. Don't tell me. <laughs> don't tell me any of that. How many, how many mass shooters have been a person of color? How, how many... Like, statistically, if mm-hmm. we're going to go on statistics here, I mean... yeah. They exist, I'm sure, but like the ratio is just well off. Not in a good way. <laughs> yeah. So it is white people get your shit together. Yeah. And um afford others the same opportunity that you have. I wanna I wanna say something. I and I don't know how to go about this. That's fine. And how how to learn from this or help change the narrative. But I feel like within if talk, bringing into religion into it. A lot of Christians believe I'm not racist because I have black friends. Ugh, that's such a hard and thing they, to like and talk they to them also about. <laughs> are so tied up with within, within right wing politics that they feel like this whole Black Lives Matter thing is a political movement, and it is not. It has nothing to do with black people. No, and so they ignore the conversation from the get go. And they're believing the mis and disinformation. And so it's like, how do you combat that? How do you, how do you educate on that? I don't think it comes down to like educating them as much as mm-hmm. reframing scripture as mm-hmm. folklore. Not to say that it's like fake, but these are, these are told accounts that were written down after a very long time of being told over and over and over. Yeah. That are different people's experiences of how they perceived God and spirituality. And those are valid. They are amazing. They're super weird and freaky sometimes, but like they are not your law. Yeah. And they mean different things now. I'm so sick of hearing that the Bible is timeless. It's never been timeless. It's been full of time. It's been limited by time. It's been changed over time. Absolutely. So... I think once you reframe scripture like that and don't take it so literally, and so like you have this tunnel vision about certain things, then you're able to like, uh, I don't, it's not manipulating scripture. It's just seeing it in like d- different lights, different angles, different perspectives of all these different yeah. cultures. And then it, it just opens your brain a lot more, I think. I feel like it's so hard to untangle <sighs> the the politics of it all. Say more. Because you have the scripture of like God saying, I am the same today, yesterday, and forever. And so they're like, the scripture is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so it's like never changing. And so trying to get somebody to understand the complexity, the nuance, the depth, the gray within the Bible as literature is so hard for them to understand because if they admit to that, 
and accept that. It's kind of one of those pieces in Jenga that just make the whole tower kind of fall and collapse. And it's like, well, if I start questioning this or accept this, what else is going to fall down? And then you have the... I think they, they might feel like it's it won't be as important anymore. But that's not exactly. the truth. Like, it's still not as credible. Necessi- credible is not the right word, but like, just as important. You can take so much... You can take more from it when you take away the like... When the scales fall off the eyes. <laughs> yeah. But then you're getting into, I know we're getting like real deep with this, but that that was the thing for me that changed in the very beginning was the first thing that deconstructed was my view of the Bible. And once that went, like shit, everything else went. Everything else goes with it. And I can see the beauty in the Bible, Mm -hmm. but I don't consider myself a Christian. I don't read the Bible. I, I have see the 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 white supremacy, the patriarchy and everything that is just very very heavy within the literature and within the history. Y'all do know that King James rewrote this shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, y'all know that like uh, people that were in power that had privilege rewrote this shit. And it was written mm-hmm. by slaves. It was written by all these different people of color, if you can believe it, because whites were not the first ones here. We're actually <laughs> abnormal. Did you know that? We are abnormal. Because we have less melanin in our skin. <laughs> because we were not supposed to have this little melanin in our skin. We are we, we are lacking in more ways than one. <laughs> trace it back to the Egyptians. Trace it back to you know the the Greeks. It, uh, whites are abnormal. Stop acting like you're high and mighty. We are. Yeah, we're weird. We're very weird. <laughs> but but if you de if you detangle mm-hmm. the Bible, you like, how do you, I guess what I'm saying is it is so hard to get somebody to see racism and mm-hmm. suspicious, 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 systemic. No, yes, but specifically, specific. just gotta get dark, specifically systemic racism and understand systemic racism <sighs> with like, with, <sighs> tearing back the Bible, untangling Mm -hmm. that and untangling your politics. If you haven't read the book, Jesus and John Wayne, I will link it in the show notes. Go fucking read it. It is a like history lesson on Christianity and their role within right-wing politics over the last like 60 years-ish, 50 to 60 years. It is so mind-boggling. Oh my God. But what? Keep going, sorry. Yeah. I have so I just had an epiphany. You just had an epiphany. Okay, well now I want you to say it. I go. Go. It's the gospel. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Wait. Okay, hold on. Keep going. I'm confused. The ultimate way we get past this is repentance. Oh shit. You just went full goddamn circle. <laughs> but like <laughs> No, for real, because like repentance it's is true. not just say, it's not just saying like I'm sorry I did something bad. It's saying I own the thing that I did. I take accountability for it, and I'm doing better now. I'm going to this is going to look different. And the majority of Christianity won't sit with that. They won't no. sit with the racism that that is inherent within America and within the world, and a lot of how Christianity perpetuated that, how it has caused a systemic problem for people of color. If we are wrong on any of this, please correct us in the comments. We want to listen to voices of color, so please like chime in in the comments on our, our Instagram. Please educate my white ass, because <laughs> <laughs> seriously, <laughs> I tell you, I'm still learning every day. Yeah, but that makes sense. Like they have not repented. They have not. We have not, as as a society as a whole, and as a, I can't say we because I don't identify as a Christian, but the Christianity as a whole on a larger scale has not set with the harm that they have done. Because the whole two people, of color. like the whole thing, is these people of color, even to this day, it's generational. It's a shout saying, you know, that you have hurt us. Please stop hurting us. Yeah. If we would just listen to it and say like. <sighs> If we heard them, if we actually heard them, if they actually heard them, they could sit with, you know, whatever conditional love that they might might have and maybe think to themselves, you know, that was wrong. And then maybe that would roll over into, I did that. 
which could roll over into, I'm sorry I did that. Let me be better. Teach me to be better for you. We, I, I, I'm not even going to ask you, Lola, because I know your answer is going to be yes, but we want to have a, a few people of color on the podcast and we want to interview them and ask questions and just hear from those voices. Be real, be really messy like, with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Call us out, like do it all. But we want, you know, somebody who is familiar with the church setting and um, that can kind of help bring that into it and dissect that with us a little bit more. Um, Jump on the case like, with us. <laughs> we, yeah, we would like somebody who is um, like in the LGBTQIA community, uh, a woman, and even a man. Like, I think we should do a handful of different interviews. Oh, for sure. Because I think this is a really important topic and I want to keep talking about it. And there are plenty of Black hate crimes that we can talk about. Um, I have I have one that I already have covered in the past that I would love to cover again because I want to talk about it more. We've got to and, talk about it. We've yeah. always got to talk so about if, it. So if you want to be on the podcast um, and you're a person of color um, and... Email us. In the LGBTQIA community, a woman or even a man with, with church knowledge and been in the church or, or even if you still identify as a Christian, that's cool. A Wiccan, cool. Go for it. We No judgment, no shame. Email us at deadlyfaithpodcast at gmail.com because we want to keep this conversation going because for sure it's important and that's the least we can do. I agree. I'm glad it ended like this. I am too. I did not expect this <sighs> episode to go this way, but I'm really glad that it not did. Not a very long case and honestly, a lot of injustices throughout it because you didn't see a lot of people answer for their crimes and you didn't hear about all the crimes that happened because half of them were probably covered up. But that is, that's very white. That's of, super of white. <laughs> like a dumb kind of white. But uh, I do have a palate cleanser that I talked about at the beginning uh, and I must talk about I it now. Really, really quick. I what? just like, how many hate comments are we going to get over on our Instagram or negative reviews are we going to get on Apple or Spotify and be like, there's just a bunch of white hating <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? They love whites. We fucking hate them. <laughs> yeah, right. I can say that I'm a white person. We're very dumb. Sometimes. See, our white privilege allows us to say this. That yeah. it we, does. white people are kind of bad. Yeah. I know a lot of good ones, but I tell you, we, we got some work to go. Just get on social media. Every other video, I am embarrassed to be white, okay? And you can't <laughs> deny that either. That. No. Just scroll through fucking answer. I don't have any time, so I'm just like, guys, can we normalize having secrets again? Because just don't put this on the internet. No. Uh, how about every apology video from every white creator? No, no person of color creator ever had to make a... Uh, apology video on YouTube. And I swear to God, it's that same crisp, clean room and the not so fancy looking sweater with the with the red eyes and the and the forget about Don't it. Don't forget the ukulele. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. Everyone here knows we'll who just, it is. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. Your book Palette Palette Cleanser. Cleanser. So it's Give a book it adjacent. Us. It's not a book. Okay. It's a bookmark, and I'm going to show Lacey. <gasps> it's, it's little mushrooms. mushrooms. Hold on. Oh, also, girl. I'm going to take one out. So it's like jelly, and I can flip <gasps> them up, and I can flip them down, and they're just very pliable and fun to play oh God, with. So while I'm reading, I'll play with this. But then when you're done, they're kind of, they're flat, and you just stick them down in the book, and it looks like a little mushroom is growing out of where you're reading. <laughs> Where did you get them? I love them. My friend gave them to me, but I'm sure we could find them somewhere like on an Etsy shop and uh, tag a creator. Okay, if we if we find them, we will try to link them um, if we can. Those are so cute. They're so oh cute. Oh my gosh, I love them. Also, I noticed the book you're reading, number five. <sighs> is that one? The Court of... Yes. What is it? A Court of... A Court of Silver Flames. <laughs> I'm still in book one and oh my God, it's so good. It's, it's a court of okay, rose. wait. A thorn. Just wait till you get 
a, a court of thorns and roses. A court is that of thorns and roses. Akatar. Yes, that's the one I'm reading. That's number one. I'm reading it so good. Once you get past the first book, we have so much to talk about. I'm only in like chapter fourteen and fifteen, and the two main characters, and I'm like, ah, blink already. Come on, I'm waiting <laughs> for it. It's such a it's, a it's a dick tease for real. It's for get, real, it's getting me like, come on. Come I on. know. Listen, it's I got you've got to get to book two. Book one is not even it. It's not even it. And I feel like it is the it's it's good, but I feel like there's gonna be very good once you get it's it's just laying the groundwork. Uh yeah, I'm ex yeah. my palate cleanser. Sarah J. Moss, she really she went hard for us. She went all out. She did. She did. It's so good. I can't wait. There's our book recommendation, it's just the (laughs) Akatar series. (laughs) Yes. We will, we will put that in the show notes as well. I got to write it down or I keep forgetting. Um, so my palate cleanser, cleanser, cleanser is to, is, to, is to share with you guys how fucking stupid I am. Oh no, not this. So, oh, I don't even know where you're going with it, but um, I don't even think I've told you this. Oh, but, I thought you were going to uh, talk about earlier before we recorded. Never mind. Oh, no. I, I see. I have a lot of fucking stupid moments, guys. You know, and I'm just oh. going to embarrass myself to the world. Let's do it. So our microwave plate, the spinny plate, um, it broke. It like shattered. And I still cannot figure out how. I know it had to have been something like it got too hot and cooled too fast kind of thing. It's the brownie pan all over again, if you follow me on Instagram. It is the brownie pan. (laughs) I was concerned for your health that day. Dude, that shattered. And this is the same thing that happened. Something like this. I don't don't know what happened. Okay, it shattered. So we were talking about getting a new plate and like it's, it's conversations were surrounding the microwave. And my kid asked how a microwave worked and my husband was explaining. And he goes, it's the little microwaves inside that heat your food. And I was cooking and I go, huh, I just got that. (laughs) Oh my God. Are you kidding me? (laughs) I'm not fucking kidding. I'm going to get Tyler on the phone. Good Lord. (laughs) He like turns around the corner. He's like, what? (laughs) I'm like, yeah, I just just got that. (laughs) No. I swear, guys. I, I, I am smart. I just say, <laughs> I have a really dumb moments. <laughs> you know what? It's the people that have to say, I'm something where you know maybe they aren't. <laughs> no, Lacey's very intelligent. You right. just, she, so people- she uses her brain cells for certain things more often than others. I do. I like do. gardening. I, I- She's on that shit. Are you kidding me? Aww. The tomatoes you grew are so big. I know. They're gigantic. They, I didn't like that plant, plant though. It was some weird plant that just like popped up and they got real big and then they split and they're, they're kind of mean. But anyways, I grew a pumpkin. It's on my front porch right now and I love it. Ah, pumpkin. I need, I need to name it. But anyways. Uh, I guess we should end it here. <laughs> yeah, that's your show. We gave you a handful of palate cleansers today, but you know, we're here for it. Again, if you're a person of color and want to be on the podcast to be interviewed, please reach out to us uh, at deadlyfaithpodcast at gmail.com. Don't be a dick. Drink some water. Don't join a cult. And don't be fucking racist, guys. That's very true. Don't do that. Yeah. I said that's very true. <laughs> I meant to say I concur or I agree or... I concur. But that's very true. Just don't be racist. Don't be racist. All right. We will listen with you guys. I just want to to say, we'll see you guys next time, but we won't see you. You'll hear us next time. Oh, my God. We've gone off the rails. Thank you, guys. Love you. Bye. (laughs) Also, heathens, if you're enjoying the show so far, please remember to subscribe on whatever platform you listen to us on and leave us a review because your salvation depends on it. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, leave us a review because we would absolutely love it. Deadly Faith is brought to you by Choircast Network. It's produced by Lacey Bean and Lola Robbins and audio engineered by Eric Howe. Thanks for listening.